Welcome to Dust, Brush and Polish. Yeah, I think it sounds good. So that was the title of this video. I will show you the different stages of your pot when it gets out of the pit fire kiln. First, when you get it out, super dusty, and then why and how you should um, remove that dust, why I do it the way that I do it. And then in the next stage, when it's, um, when it's brushed off, you move on typically with some sort of polishing. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I do, why I do it, and I'll show you those three different stages of your pot. Of course, normally you wouldn't use the pot in the dusty stage, but maybe you just want to use it in the brushed stage, or maybe you want to move on to the polished stage, and you can do that in different ways. So let's move on with that. This is a pot that I just got out of the kiln. It has been um, wrapped in some um, copper, uh, copper sponge, <laughs> um, some net, uh, fishnet like in copper, and wrapped up in tin foil. This is the dusty stage. And um, let me just show you close up here. And as you see, of course, this is not useful as it is. We need to do something about it. So the first step is to remove all the loose parts. This is easy done. Just take it off with your hands. Um, you can just remove it like this. And then um, I will do that in the kiln because it is super dusty. Then everything is collected in the kiln and I can empty that afterwards, throw it out. This is another good example of a dusty pot. I just took it out of the kiln. It's still a little bit warm, not too much, but uh, as you can see, it's it's matte. The colors are not shining, and of course, there's all this uh, tin foil left over. And of course, I mean, actually, you could exhibit it like that, but it wouldn't last for long because it's falling off very easily. So we need to get this off. In the first stage, we're just gonna remove it with the hands. This is actually a very good example of a pot in the dusty stage. Because even though you can sort of see the, the, the interesting, beautiful uh, colors, it's covered up in uh, this layer of dust. Um, and I mean, just by removing a little bit of it, you may be able to see it better. No, actually, we need to brush it a little more. That's the next stage. At the first stage of uh, brushing, I um, I usually just use my hand. It is kind of dirty now, but I just want to get all the loose parts off um, that are easy to remove. Um, and as you see, it, it becomes much better just by doing that. But. When you start doing that, you will probably also experience like this um, some areas, <clears throat> some areas where there's some combustible, some some ashes or something that have burned itself a little more into into the pot. Some of it, see, some of this falls off um, just by brushing it with your hand. Um, but there might be like this little piece. There's a little bit of, I don't know, crusty um, area here. Um, some people um, use water to clean up their pots. I don't like to do that because if you do use um, water, you have to remember that these are still pros. They can still absorb uh, water. So if you do use water, um, it will soak into the pot and then you have to wait for it to be completely dry before you can uh, polish it. Because otherwise you're gonna trap all that water in, in the clay and that's not good. So um, I will just try and, and clean it in a dry stage. This um, is the one where we use the, the fishnet. Um, and 
because that copper net it always leaves leaves uh, some 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 um, some small uh, marks. Uh, it's like feels a little crusty or something. Um, and you want to want to remove that, of course. You want a smooth surface, at least I do. And so again, I'm just gonna try and remove it with my with my bare hands. Be careful; there could be some 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 sharp edges. Um, but that's the first stage. And now we have the pots kind of cleaned. It's the same thing with this uh, bowl. Um, I have removed most of it. Um, with my hands, um, and there's still it's still a little um, I don't know, uneven. So there's some areas. Same thing with this uh, small one. Um, I can remove a lot of it with my hands, as you see. I'm just brushing it off. Um, but there's still something left. So the question is, how do you remove that? When cleaning my uh, pots from the dusty stage to the brushed stage, I'm primarily using three things. I'm using a, let me just get over here. I'm using a regular sponge. This is just a cheap sponge that you use in your kitchen. It's got this rough side and a soft side that is usually enough to get most of it off. Now there's some sticky parts like, like the, the carbon I was just showing, or, or, or ash or what it was, that kind of burned into the pot. It can be a little more tricky. And also if you have some dark areas, if they can be very intensive dusty. And actually you can get a really nice shine on the dark areas using um, steel wool. Steel wool is nice because it's super fine, so it doesn't leave any, any um, grinding uh, marks or anything. So use that as a lot. And if you have something that is very <laughs> sticky or very sharp. I also have a diamond sponge, uh, which you can use lightly on some of the, the edges, so you don't have these sharp edges. Also sometimes in the foot or the rim, there's some edges that, that you wanna, um, wanna grind off like this. So let's move on with that first. I always start with the brush because that is the least invasive <laughs> um, way of, of, of cleaning it. Um, and, and, and we only want all those uh, loose particles uh, removed. Um, and um, I think this is, this is going well. And I think for this particular pot, I think this is actually more or less uh, enough. Um, I do see, however, some dark areas that um, where there's still there's still a little bit left, and where I think I can achieve a better shine if I use some of the steel wool. So let's just take some of it, and I'm just going to show you a little closer here. Um, if you look at this, um, an area like this. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong, but if you um, if you polish it with the steel wool, you would get a deeper black and a better shine. And of course, you would get the last part of the, um, the sticky particles off, and it will be completely smooth. Um, and I like that. So. So here, sometimes when you when you when you use the steel wool on the black part, some of the black is actually going away, and other colors are coming up under it. I think that's fine. Um, of course, it's a matter of taste. But this way, you make sure that there's no loose particles left, because if there is, then I mean, eventually they're going to fall off. Um, so, so you want whatever is left to be. Um, to be sticky and solid. So I think I think this is nice. Now it feels now it feels really good. There's still some dust left and I'm gonna show you in the end how we're gonna do deal with that. So the other one um, 
it's actually a lot smoother so um, there's some it's typically in the dark areas because that's where most of the ashes um, have attached itself and and uh, and that tend to to stick a little more I tend to do this on the outside because these very fine particles, once you start dusting it off, uh, these very fine, very light particles and probably not too good to breathe. Maybe I should have some mask on. Some would probably suggest that. Um, anyway, outside is a little more safe, I think. So this one too. I'm also going to use the steel wire on the black part. Yeah, yeah. Now you see, they're shining much better, and um, yeah, this is this is really really good. And this one, um, there's actually very little, um, there is this one part that I mentioned on this one. It's, um, I'm just uh, with here. This part is crunchy. Oh, it's, it's, it, it doesn't feel so nice. And I think we can remove it with the steel wool. This is getting much better now. I think actually this is a part where we could use a little bit of the of the diamond sponge. But you have to be very careful when you do this because the diamond sponges are very um, very effective and um, they can easily take off too much. But now it's smooth. That is nice. We also smudged the black a little round, but I think actually that looks that looks beautiful and natural, so so that's fine. I think other than that, there might be some dark areas here where we want to brush that as well, or polish it. Um, no, brush it, grind it, I guess. Um, and up here, and um, I think that's it for this. That was the more rough part of the of the of the dusting off. Um, but as I said, there's still some. Uh, you can see it on my fingers. There's still some dust left. And I mentioned in the beginning that I don't use water. <laughs> that is not entirely true, because I do. If you want that um, those dusty particles off, you need to wash them off. But I don't use a lot of water. I only take this um, this cup and uh, I um, it's only damp. It's not really wet. I'm just going to use it to um, to get rid of the dust. Um, and um, but be careful because it will turn black. And um, if you just keep using it, you will just uh, um, distribute all the all the dust over the lighter areas and and you don't want that um, the good thing about doing this is also that it's the first time where you sort of reveal um, how how shiny it is because just by doing this get get rid of that dusty layer see how much more vivid the colors become and of course it will be even more once you burnish it if you choose to do so But remember to rinse it between every um, every wash. And there's so little water on this that it doesn't really absorb into the pot and, and it will dry off really, really quickly.
so this one and the last one here And the water, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but it's very black now. That's it. Now they are, <clears throat> now they are cleaned. Um, we got rid of the dust. And now we have the, the raw, um, raw stage of, of the pot. Next up is polishing. So now it's the final stage <laughs> from the dust to the brushed, to the polished. You don't necessarily have to polish your pots, but I think when you look at them now, I think it's probably difficult to see on video. They look okay. I mean, it's, it's not bad. You can definitely see the colors. We got rid of all the, the, the dust. So it's now a clean surface and you could leave it like that. But most people prefer, including me, to also polish it. Um, not only does it help prevent finger marks, uh, it makes it easier to wipe it off uh, when you have it in your home, but also it en en enriches the colors. It's actually quite uh, surprising the first time you, 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 you polish uh, a pit fight pot to see how it makes the colors explode, basically. They, they become so much stronger, the contrast is increased. And, I, it adds some shine, uh, and especially for like this one, I used um, the colored Celtic ladder, as I said, so it's not naturally as shiny as it would be if it was a, a clean uh, Celtic ladder. So I do want to bring back a little bit of shine. I also, uh, because these parts, they are sort of tall, and uh, lots of my, my, my clients, including myself, just use them as a decorative piece, like a sculpture. Sometimes I put dried, um, dried flowers in them. But if you have a big, big pocket of, uh, of um, flowers, they also look nice. Uh, I just had a client that got one very similar to this with uh, lots of flowers. He had an anniversary of some kind and it looked nice. But for that, you also need to seal the pots because low-fi pottery is not completely waterproof. So you need to seal them. I use different um, ingredients for, for, for different purposes. Let's just jump through the, the sealing. Uh, I tested so many different kinds of sealants. Um, I started out using this one. Um, this is from a Danish supplier, but you can also get it from Rakovaya, uh, rakovaya.com. They sell it. it. I think it's acrylic based. Um, anyway, you just pour it in, shuffle it around a little bit, shake it around put it back. Then you leave it for the next day and then you do it one more time. And that makes it not 100% waterproof, but it improves it. But what I found is um, this uh, concrete sealant, and this is from a local uh, company, so unless you live uh, in, in, in Denmark, this is probably not relevant for you. It's from a company called LIP, it's called a multi-binder. I have no idea what that actually is. I think from the smell and consistency, I also think it's some sort of acrylic, uh, um, but it works much better than the other one. Because I do the same thing, I pour it in, shake it around, pour it out, leave it next day and give it one more go. And then it becomes 100% uh, waterproof. I tested this with a big vase like this. I put in, I think maybe four or five liters of water and I left it on a napkin for a couple of weeks because I would be able to see on the napkin if there was any traces of humidity going through and there was nothing, absolutely nothing. So this is actually 100% waterproof. The problem with this is of course that it's not food safe, uh, but for these ones, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna store food in it. But if you have a bowl, um, sort of like this one, it's also pit fried and I think it's beautiful. Uh, I used to use the same sort of things for, 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 for sealing it, which is okay if you store oranges or bananas and things with peel. But I just recently found this um, uh, liquid quartz, it's called. 
I just put that label on because I bought a big bucket of it. It's from Australia. It is awful expensive, but you use very, very little. So per item, it's not too bad. But this is, um, this is approved in Australia and Europe for food. And it's a nanoparticle quartz uh, that goes in and close uh, all the little pores in, in the clay. And it actually becomes completely waterproof. So that is very good. Uh, resistant to water, oil, red wine, whatever you put into it. So that works. For the, um, for the purpose of uh, polishing your pot and, and increasing the colors, you can actually use the same um, sealant uh, that I got from Rabobai or this local supplier. But what most people use is some sort of wax. Some people use bee wax or furniture wax, tube wax. A lot of them are sort of hot, so you need to heat it up or you need to heat up the pot in order to apply it. Maybe I'm just too lazy, maybe I just prefer other ones, but I found um, two others that I use on a regular basis. This is called mink oil, um, and you can get it in different, uh, different labels. This is just a local one that I picked up. The good thing about mink oil is that it's very soft, uh, so you don't need to do anything. Uh, it's very easy to apply, it even smells good. And so I like to use that. It's a semi-gloss, which is silky kind of surface that is really, really nice. And it does increase the colors. One that is more common is uh, this Renaissance. Um, uh, this is um, Renaissance Wax, it's called. Uh, and I think you can also get different, different labels with this. This is a little more hard, but not much. Um, it's a little stiff, but you still don't need to warm it up. You can still just apply it. This is a little more shiny. I like that one. I've been using that more and more recently. Some people also just use acrylic spray. That's super easy. Except you have to be careful when you spray. Like start uh, outside the pot, move it over the pot, go outside. Because if you just go on the pot like this, then some of the areas are going to get too much. And like always when you paint or spray or something, put a thin layer. And then if you need more, put in another thin layer. Not too much, because then it starts dripping and it doesn't look good. So I'll just go ahead and, um, and use some of the... I think, I think the, the Renaissance wax would look uh, really nice in this way. Basically, I just use this uh, old piece of um, cloth, um, apply it. And now I'm not sure if you can actually see the difference um, on a video, but this is where it's wax, this is where it's not wax. It may be difficult to see, but I will wax this one, and in the end of the video, I will, I will uh, take some pictures, some studio photos, and, and I will show you the results. And as you see, even though it's a little more stiff, um, it's still possible to apply it without, without heating um, the pot which I like. So what you basically do is you apply it liberally um, because after you ignite it, you want to get something in it. So everything, everywhere where you have um, the coloring, where you can see it. So not deep inside the pot, but in this case, um, the rim is also uh, colored, and uh, so I want that increased. I'm just going to move this away a little bit. Um, so, and I mean, you can't really use too much. It's not gonna. It's not like. Um, acrylic spray or something where you have to be sure to remove any excess um, uh, uh, acrylic um, material otherwise it will leave these uh, marks uh, that it's very difficult to get away it's not the same with the wax you can apply it and even if that's a little too much it doesn't matter because after we finished and after we make sure that we got it all apart um, we will then polish it. And um, the last part of it, I'm just going to continue and finish this one. 
And you can actually feel when you do it that uh, it becomes sort of slippery, like like ice or something. And um, so there's areas, sort of like when you're wheel throwing, and and there are areas that are not that are not wet. You don't apply any slip or water to, and your your fingers are gonna stick. It's sort of the same when you when you apply this. So um, just give it a little more here. I want to make sure that all the pores are filled with uh, with this wax um, because that's gonna gonna secure a high highest possible gloss. Um, Especially in areas like this, where you have some black, um, you really see a big difference because yeah, well, the, the contrast is just increased, so the black becomes blacker and um, it, it just looks great. Good. So now I applied it all over the pot, and you don't actually need it to sit for a long time, then you can start polishing. And again, I'm not sure if you actually see this, but to me, it's very obvious that um, things are happening. You wanna you wanna polish it enough to get the greasy, sticky um, feel away, uh, so that it just becomes like a like a yeah a sealed surface in a way. to feel right. And again, even if you, especially with this wax, um, even if you uh, find out later that you left some areas that were not polished enough, you can go back and do it. It, um, it doesn't harden, uh, at least it goes a long time before it does. Now, again, I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but there's a huge difference. Now it, it shines and the colors, the contrast is just dramatically improved. I'm happy. So now we just need to, um, to seal the inside with the, the multibinder. I'm gonna do that by the sink and there's not much to watch with that. So um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I will show you some uh, studio photos because it shows better um, with these photos. Um, I have a small studio where I can take photos. I actually have a video about how I do the photos. So if you wanna go and watch that, I think I'll put a link up here. Um, I'll show a video uh, of some photos of the finished pots just in a second. Um, if you like this video, um, if you wanna watch more of my Pitfire videos, um, please come back, subscribe, um, like, share, write a comment if you have any comments. I will try and answer the best that I can. And I hope to see you soon again. Have a great day.